listening to Phantasm Podcast, a horror death metal podcast for the old school. Stuff, horror movie reviews, and death metal interviews, all in one body bag. Listen on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, and like on Facebook, and head over to OutlandMedia.net for more. Hey, this is Jason from Misery in Action, you're listening to Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Corey Gorkreis, Phantasm Podcast. I'm here with Jason Netherton of Misery Index. We've got Rituals of Power coming out March 8th, Season of Mist Records. This is really exciting. First album in five years. Uh, what's going on, man? Uh, it's just, uh, this is, uh, I mean, the album's coming out next week, so it's kind of an exciting time. You know, but anytime you put, put a lot of work into something and see it come to uh, fruition and and you, you get the recording done and you wait months for it to come out it's you know it's be kind of a kind of a um, I don't know it just kind of wears on you a little bit and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and then all of a sudden okay it's now it's, it's about to happen so this is a pretty busy week for us not only is the album coming up next week we're gonna we're going to Japan for a couple shows next week and uh, awesome European tour later in March, so it's uh, starting to move ahead. Yeah, you got the uh, Heidelberg Death Fest. That's March nineteenth, correct? I think it's March twenty second. March twenty second. Uh, yeah, it's the end of, end of March, and yeah, it's a kind of a uh, it's a good start to things there, and there's a lot of festivals in Europe. So oh yeah. Always, seems like every city has their own death fest so <laughs> that's kind of cool you know it's a it's a it's a bigger monster over there for sure uh yeah what, definitely in germany what are some of the bands playing at the the death fest there uh vomitory oh shit unleashed um it's all i can remember right now <laughs> it's amazing yeah the really excited uh for misery index fans alike rituals of power first album since the killing gods in 2014 it's such an amazing way to leave off you know and then five years later you got this and it's uh i think the killing gods was a perfect way to you know um to end things where it did you know and then circa five years till now you know um really anticipating this new record you got a few tracks out right now that are just fucking awesome like right where you guys left off it hasn't stopped you said that uh this one was a ritual. Rituals of power is a disavowal and a warning against the consequences of our so-called post-truth age. So, uh, talk a little bit about that, like the lyrical content, as far as going into this record. Yeah, I mean, a few years ago, it kind of, you know, that kind of discussion of uh, fake news and all that stuff came up, and right, and it's just kind of a commentary on what the implications of you know how of our of our communications and media systems and our news all becomes you know if, if everything all becomes relative and up to question and it, it just has uh, some pretty dark dark implications for uh, civilization and democracy and everything else that kind of functions on us all kind of agreeing on certain basic you know facts of what our reality is so, right but it's kind of a springboard as a it kind of runs like a thread through each of the songs on the record, some more prominently than others. Right. But uh, it's that's the main theme: the inner the inner relationship between truth and power, and how truth, when in, is used to, you know, can be defined by those in power in a certain way. It's used to uphold certain power regimes. Right. So. And not really to get into politics, but I always thought it was kind of scary that. Uh, 
you know, just the way that everything's been working out, where people just kind of take things for exactly what people tell them, and then nobody really thinks for themselves at this point. There was a period where people started to, and then now it's kind of back to like, well, yeah, they said this, so this is true, or people are so quick to automatically cast people out based on media facts, and and, then nobody's fact-checking shit everybody's just kind of taking everything for face value now and then the other side of it is like well that's they said it was fake news so it must be fake news like people just believe whatever now and it's kind of it's kind of a scary time you know uh as far as as far as the uh, processing of information (laughs) yeah i I just don't i don't know what happened but uh (laughs) things are a little a little crazy right now uh so we need things like metal and misery index to balance the fucking world out because I don't know what's happening. So <laughs> it's nice to have well, trying to keep some kind of center to hold it all together. I guess. <laughs> That's kind of what you have to do. That's what we've lost, I think, is that kind of center. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't mind, I'd like to do like a brief uh, track by track if that's cool. Yeah, sure. So we'll, we'll start with the opening track here: "Rituals of Power." Uh, Universal Untruths is track number one. Yeah, uh, well, that's just, it's more or less an introduction track, but it is, it is intended to be a standalone track, but it's a kind of, uh, you know, it, it kind of eases the listener into the record and makes it kind of, it sets the atmosphere, it sets a kind of ominous and foreboding kind of like entry portal into what's going to come, and and it asks the basic theme questions of the, you know, lyrically of what the record's about, about universal truths, not just that, it's universal untruths, it's kind of a play on words. Right. And it's it's written, it was both both that and the song after it, Decline and Fall, were written by Darren primarily, and he kind of wrote them together, and they were kind of put together that way, so. Awesome. So then you got Decline and Fall, so that one kind of goes right into it from universal untruths. It's a continuation of that theme, and musically, I think it's it's like the it's not too far off from like maybe something in the Killing Gods. It's kind of a I guess it's a pretty typical Misery Index song. It's all it's you know it's one of the faster songs on the record. It also has like the, the you know the dynamics towards the end where things kind of uh, break breaks things down a little bit and. And it's, I think that, you know, it's not, we didn't make it one of the singles or whatever, but it's still, I think it's just as good as like the, you know, we made it the first song on the record pretty much, so it's it's a powerful song. Hell yeah, awesome. Uh, the, the Choir Invisible. Yeah, that was Mark's song, and uh, it's it's also Adam's favorite song, Drum Lines. I think he, he, he really likes the, the hooks and the performance on that one a lot, and that was the second, I guess, track we released uh, to promote the record, and and it's a pretty, you know, it's a mid-paced kind of song with a, a good, heavily triplet riff, and it has a kind of big, almost 80s style, like metal chorus, which kind of has a really good hook to it. I like, and and it's capped off, you know, has a pretty, a really good kind of atmospheric midsection, and. Uh, it's capped off at the end with I think one of Darren's best solos that he's delivered while he's been in the, since he's been in the band joined the band in 2010. Oh yeah, awesome! And then we got uh, New Salem, which you guys have a music video for, and you guys can check that out on uh, YouTube and everywhere. Yeah, that's that's Mark's song. Mark wrote the lyrics and the music to that one, and uh, it's a pretty solid. It's that we we dealt, uh, when I was to all the songs, I thought that one was like the most like representative, compact to the point kind of like uh, track to represent the album first. So we right. released that back in December, and and it's uh, a lot of people responded well to it. So yeah, it's definitely even for Misery Index song, it's very catchy, and you know it's. Something that gets uh, stuck in your head. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Mark's got a knack for that. <laughs> He's doing a pretty good job of it. I'll give him yeah. that. Uh, Hammering the nails, number five. Uh, that's one of that's one of the two songs I wrote for the album, and it's uh, it's a kind of throwback to an old kind of like early '90s bull thrower, old and tunes kind of uh, 
Fuck yeah. It's just kind of, it's a really simple song. It really has a, sw- a kind of a swagger or a swing to it. And yeah. It's, uh, I think it's a good driving song. If you put, you know, if you're driving, it's kind of a, you know, we on, our, on all of our records, we always kind of have like one song, which is kind of like a pretty straight to the point, uh, simple kind of like song, which reflects, I guess, our old school influences a bit. And, and I right. guess that was the, the one that made the record this time. Nice. And you can't hammering the nails, you know, it's uh, pretty straightforward yeah, we're, there. It's a kind of, you know, we're hammering the nails on the coffin <laughs> of civilization. That's kind of the, <laughs> it's about the as, analogy. It's about as brutal and uh, metal as you can get, so I appreciate that. It's fucking awesome. Uh, Rituals of Power, the title track, you got a lyric video for that as well. Yeah, that's another one that approaches that kind of, tr- you know, the idea of truth. I mean, it's the title track, but it's it takes that historic view of, like, you know, truth has been used to enforce power, you know, through centuries of, of modern times. And it's also uh, a really good, you know, uh, has a really good, it, it's another song It doesn't have any blast beats this time around. And it's a very straight ahead kind of, you know, almost kind of punk, a kind of punk, hardcore kind of driven verse. But at the same time, it has a, like, a really heavy, uh, kick you to the face kind of chorus and the midsection is like a it's almost like a kind of dis- old dissection you kind of really open on me and you know melodically tinge kind of uh, atmosphere midsection which I really like it yeah. opens it up a lot for the vocals to kind of to, to get a good some good rhymes in there and and I think it's it, it gives that sense of like I don't know it captures that kind of anxiety of our age and for better or worse and and it, it's the title track it kind of worked out that way pretty well yeah it's good shit it's a definitely pretty ripping track uh, they always come back number seven I actually really like the title of that I was curious about it <laughs> yeah that's 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 the other song I wrote for the album uh, which is oddly enough another song I have which has no blast beats this time around and it's got a lot of mid. It's a kind of another mid pace heavy one, which goes through a lot of different cycles of riffs and and uh, it's. It, I imagine it is like. I mean, I was really inspired to write a kind of slow, what like a slow, more of an angel kind of God of emptiness kind of thing. But Fuck how yeah. we would do it. Yeah. And um, I, like I mean, the theme is kind of like a riff on another theme from another record called a song called the Carrying Call. It's kind of like a postscript to the Carrying Call, like a. Love that song. Yeah. Know apocalyptic yeah like the world after people and I remember those TV shows like what would the world look like after people if we all died out and this is kind of picks up that theme like well human beings are so resilient that in some form or another we're going to come back like cockroaches you know, <laughs> survive anything and, and they always come back so fuck yeah it's one of the fantasy driven kind of songs on the record but yeah I like the uh I definitely like as far as your guys' records, you know, the transition like Heirs to Thievery is probably still my favorite. Uh it's hard between that and, and Traders, but Heirs to Thievery I think was you know, solidified me. I was like, Okay, you know, I, the first time I heard Misery Index was Retaliate and then Circa oh, wow. all the way to Heirs to Thievery, I'm like, This solidifies it. Like I fucking love Misery Index. And then when the Killing Gods came out, um you know, I, I saw you guys at the pre-show fest at Maryland Death Fest, and it was you guys insane, you know. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah, you guys fucking brought that shit, and it was in Maryland, so, I mean, obviously you had a, a lot of hometown people there, and it was extra nuts, so it was, it was a good time, was, you know. Yeah. Um, so if any of you guys, you know, you got you, anyone in Europe listening, uh, go see some of those shows if you're out in Germany, uh, if you're in Japan. Don't fucking miss Misery Index Live, because holy shit. <laughs> you guys fucking bring it. I'm really excited for Ritual Power. You got a few more tracks here. Uh, I Disavow, which was uh, one of the tracks you guys, had, I think, released early. Yeah, we released the kind of, like, demo version of it. Yeah. Uh, like, um, I guess it was about this time last year. Yeah, it was around, like, I think maybe, yeah, sometime around this time, yeah. Yeah. Summer last year. And that was meant to be a kind of hint as to where we're going, and and you know we re-recorded it for the album, and it's uh, it's 
to making its appearance a little later in the record, I guess, because people might already been familiar with it. So, but it's uh, it's one of the one of the rippers, like this one, along with the last song, Naysayer. I guess the most kind of like in your face, kind of ferocious songs. But but this one's a little longer, more involved. Like I Disavow has like a you know it slows down in the middle. It has a, a solo section and and it has a it comes back around again with a breakdown at the end and. That's another one that I guess is, is more of a more typical Misery Index song. Awesome. And then, uh, yeah, the last track, number nine, Naysayer. Yeah, Naysayer, uh, this is the one song that was kind of weird. Like, the lyrics were, it was the last song we wrote for the record. The lyrics were kind of undeveloped. And I had, like, a kind of, like, stream of consciousness lyrics written, and Mark took them. He kind of wrote the song around it and put it together. Just nice. to get another song on the record, and, <laughs> and we, you know, we weren't sure if it was going to come out all right, but we, it came out quick, pretty, pretty vicious, and we thought it'd make for a good closer. So, uh, and it's also we're also incidentally shooting a promotional video for it tomorrow. Awesome! So that's going to be out in uh, towards the end of March. Hell yeah! We'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, thanks for the track by track. We're Really looking forward to the record. It's really close. You know, I got about a week, and uh, the thing's going to be out, so we're really excited about that. Um, March 8th, Rituals of Power, Season of Miss Records, Misery Index. So excited about it. You got some shows coming up, uh, starting in Japan, and then you got a European tour uh, in Germany. Really excited about that as well for you guys. Hopefully that... uh, Hope you guys kick kick their ass, and... uh, you know, you have fun out there, and, and you're safe. Um, one last segment we, we like to try to delve into. Uh, at Phantasm here is, is horror movies. Are you guys fans? Uh, yeah, I'm very much a fan. Fuck yeah. What are, what, are, what are some of your favorites, if you got a few of them? Oh, put me on the spot. <laughs> I guess. Uh... So anyhow, just throw some names out there. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to just like look at the let me think. Uh, I mean, Phantasm, for sure. Yeah, hell yeah. Phantasm. All right. That's a good one. Of course. I don't know if it's a horror, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's early, you know, it's like in the late 70s, so that was a very crazy movie for its time, you know. And most people still to this day, it's hard to just watch that movie and it was so it was just something eerie about it. The, the atmosphere was like unlike you know anything I'd seen before. It was, and then the score is really good, and it's just uh, the the tall man as like a person, you know, is so different. It's like yeah, it's just something. Yeah, like yeah, he's so. a creepy dude. Like usually you have to put effects makeup on or something. Like he just put on a suit and was just creepy anyway. You know, <laughs> exactly. it's it's hard to be like a creepy guy and pull it off. Normal, you know. And then act creepy. He just literally, in a scene, was uh, you know smelled uh, Mike's fear like the kid, and like yeah. across the street, and he just looks creepy. He's just like, you know, so that was that was good. It's it's a good it's a good time. Um, do you do you like gore like uh, crazy slapstick shit like Evil Dead? Like, you know, I like to. So I, a lot of, I mean, like the thing. That's another big one for me. Oh, that's, a, that's it's crazy. Movie, so. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, John Carpenter, great movie. The some of the best special effects I think ever made is that film. Uh, yeah, nice analog stop motion. Yeah, super gory. Uh, Kurt yeah. Russell and Keith David. I mean, you can't go wrong. You know, it's a it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. Reanimator too. I mean, oh, you know, fuck like, yeah! It's the classics. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we get into. You know, the new stuff, I mean, some people bring up the new stuff, we can go there, but whenever we do reviews and stuff, we're 80s and back, we try to stick to the to the old stuff. And with the resurgence of uh Blu-rays and collecting and stuff, it's it's brought back a lot of those movies to where you can see them to where they're a lot nicer looking and it's presented more appropriately than you know like when they first came out instead of you know yeah. a lot of those movies were trapped on like VHS or you know when they got put out on DVD they just really never had the 
proper treatment for what they were, you know. And now nowadays they're actually putting this stuff out and remastering it and it looks really awesome, so there's kind of a resurgence for this stuff and it's really it's really, you know, a good thing that cuz there's really not much good horror, you know, in modern times coming out. There's just not, you know. A yeah, real... it's hard to make. It's hard to make a good one. Yeah. You know, it's... They did everything, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's hard to come up with a new kill scene or just make like an iconic kind of character because in the 80s they weren't even trying like everything was money back then you can just have a guy put on a mask and as long as the kills were interesting yeah. they could make a movie you know and make some money the uh, burning yeah the, the burning was fucking awesome you know that was one of the first uh, episodes we did was about the burning and uh you know, I think it was Tom Savini, you know, early on, and uh, yeah. Cropsy is a is a very cool, you know, slasher character, you know, yeah. with the fucking shears. I mean, nobody else did that after that. So, <laughs> well, you know, camp, camp fun. You get, uh, uh, so many <laughs> teenagers in a camp getting hacked up all you know all weekend. It's always that's always a good uh, horror scenario. Exactly. So put teenagers in a camp doing drugs and. Uh, they're they're all sure to die, so it's fun. Um, yeah, Reanimator's great. It's just insane. It's an insane movie. Excellent. Good special effects, all that. So, I guess you'd say those are your some of your favorites are just off the top of your head. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I've, I got this laundry list of movies I've been waiting to watch. But yeah, I mean, I've been discovering a lot of the Italian ones too from the seventies. Yeah, know, lately and Margento and, stuff and. Fulci. Yeah, definitely. I like this one. I really like this one from. Uh, uh, it's like from 1991 called The Cemetery Man, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one of the last ones done of that kind of old school style. I can't pronounce the, his name. It's uh, uh, It's like Michael Sove or whatever. He's he's done Michael quite Sove, a yeah. yeah, he's done he's done a few uh, really good movies. Like uh, Stage Fright's really good. Um, that's like the owl mass killer. That's a really crazy movie. Uh, he's done a few more really good ones, but that's Cemetery Man is his like baby, and that's that's such a good movie. Yeah, and I really like the. I don't know. It kind of has this like you know philosophical side to it, which is really you know it's, surreal. It's, it's like almost a, like a noir kind of thing too. Yeah, it spins off into the second. The second act is like this really surreal kind of take on the whole thing and reality bending I, I, that one really resonated with me for sure yeah that's a that's a classic like Italian horror movie and then they they remade it in America and they made that Dylan Dog movie and it's such a piece of shit <laughs> if you watch <laughs> if you like Cemetery Man so much I would I would watch Dylan Dog just to see how like bad they made it and then you, you won't even get through all of it you're just gonna be like wow this is what they tried to do oh really it. yeah it's, it's pretty bad like it's they didn't give any credit to the original but it's definitely what they they riffed off of, and it's just it's just terrible. So it's it's funny though. It's I would I would at least just be like, wow, this is awful, and then turn it off. <laughs> just give it give it like a little bit, and then you won't even finish it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I had a re- is it the remake of Pet Cemetery coming out this year too? See, that actually looks promising because I to be honest, yeah. I really don't like the original Pet Cemetery. I just didn't. It's I don't know. It was more like an annoying movie to me. I don't know. It was just yeah, like, I, I saw it in the theater when it came out, and uh, nice. that was the only time I haven't seen it since. So I, I don't know how to like evaluate. Oh wow! It, it holds up over time or whatever. But. Yeah, it holds up. It's just a movie I've never really was just like, oh my god, Pet Cemetery. But the new one looks really awesome. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, the new Halloween was amazing. Uh, definitely check that out if you haven't. Um, okay. A lot of people are skeptical about it. Uh, skeptical about it. The new Halloween, solid, really good. If you like slashers, you like Michael Myers, you're you're set. The movie's really awesome. Nice. But yeah, man, uh, it's been a, it's been a pleasure having you. Looking forward to uh, Rituals of Power. March eighth, next week. Seasons of Mist, really excited. Um, anything else you'd like to plug before I let you go? Uh, yeah, we're gonna. I guess we're gonna have some U.S. dates on the horizon in June. We're gonna do uh, ten shows 
mostly in the in the northeast and east, but uh, but uh, yeah, there's gonna be more shows to come. So fuck yeah. Hopefully we'll get out to wherever you are too. I don't know where you are, but hell yeah, we're in uh, Florida. So if you guys are out there, ah, oh, excellent, awesome man. Well, it was great having you. It's awesome talking to you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Awesome. Thanks for the chat. Hey, no problem, man. You have a good one.